This weekend, we are in Cleveland for the Strongsville Card Show. It's one of the strongest vintage shows out there. Let's see how we do. First deal is done here in Strongsville. Went through a bunch of different cards here, 50s through 70s, some pre-war as well. So show you guys some of the highlights over here as well. So first is gonna be a bunch of Minozos, one of the newest members of the Baseball Hall of Fame. Cards are pretty popular right now. Always picking up some Burke Ross cards when I have the opportunity to do so. So I have a big boxing PC. I got a Ray Robinson over here, Charles, and in the middle we have Warren Spawn, baseball Hall of Fame pitcher. And some of the other cards I picked up here, like this Palmer rookie, and then also some Sandy Koufaxes. One of my friends on Twitter is looking for a few of these, so I decided to pick them up for him. But I'll show you guys the whole pickups over here on the side now. So you guys just saw that bulk raw purchase. Well, myslabs.com now offers raw cards availability. So whether you wanna buy or sell them, they are now on the platform. It is no longer just graded cards. And I'm also helping them look at some of the different cards if there's questionable authenticity on that side of things. So make sure to check out myslabs.com. They also have some of the lowest fees on the market for selling. So make sure you grab that top dollar. You can find some deals on their platform as well. So one of the coolest things at the show is these 1968 Topps 3D cards. They're kind of test cards that Topps released in New York at the time. Now the go-to card in the set is the Roberto Clemente. It fetches crazy numbers, but I found a few other players here. Check them out. So one really cool regional release here in Ohio is the Cons. It's a food card, but I'm going to talk to a dealer who has multiple, multiple cards across different years about the release. In, uh, 1955 to 69, Cincinnati, which is where I'm from, and uh, a lot of these were a collection from when I was a kid. I collected them. And they sell pretty good in places like Cleveland and Detroit because they were also issued there, but Cincinnati is the base, uh, Cons is based in Cincinnati. Guys, we just made this big deal over here. I think it's like 565, 575, somewhere around there. Uh, first is some non sports cards. I learned about this card from one of my friends, John Morton. You remember from the Alabama card show? Well, I picked this up at the National. I saw this here, had to pick it up. It looked really awesome in an SGC slab, so that's where I'm probably gonna end up sending that one. We've got a few actor cards as well and sports, so we'll take a look at some of these over here. I can go in full detail. 
Then we're gonna go into some baseball cards. So I think this is a 1928 Lefty Grove. We'll know about his Gaudis and maybe his Harmel from 1932, but this is one of his 20s. It's a strip card, pretty hard to find. I've been looking for this one a little bit for my PC. That'd be 560. There we go. Next, we have two T205s, McGraw and Chance. But what makes the McGraw special, it's actually a factory 42 Piedmont. And these are considered short prints in the T205 set. So when you can find them, they go for a little bit of a premium. Having the Hall of Famer and the Scarcer back is pretty cool. These are rare as well. You don't often see them. T207s. Two commons here, but they are slabbed. I know a few people that would want to have these in their collection. <laughs> and lastly, I think this is really cool because you don't see this all the time. It's a coupon card from 1914. These have three different years of releases, but they are like identical from a T206 on the front. However, when you turn over to the back, take a look at this. Really cool. Miller Huggins, a Hall of Famer as well. Gonna keep making deals here. Two more really cool items here at the show are a 1939 and 1940 Playball fully signed set. So getting the full sets is tough enough, but someone actually got the autograph of all the players. Take a look at these. Oscar Robertson, really true rookie card. It created the Fleer by one year because the Fleer was 1961. This is the 1960. We check it out right here. And here is the back. Note that the 1961s do have a stuff on the back, whereas some later years do not. So it's very interesting. And the pictures look similar, but I'm really grab to, gra to grab this one for my PC. Showing my Jim Brown PSA 9. Only two graded 9 out there. Only 14 totally graded. If you're interested, give me a call. <laughs> All right, guys, I am going to be talking to Mike, one of the promoters here at the Strongsville show, about the history. The show, I believe, has been around since the 1970s. So kind of curious to hear about the history. The history of the show. Um, this show dates back to 1978, which is, I, I think it makes it the longest running show in the country. Uh, the National National Sports Collectors Convention doesn't even go back that far. So this show is really special in my heart because I've been coming here. I'm an old man now, but I've been coming here since I was maybe about 18, and that was 1987. So this show uh, has gone through several different changes as far as promoters are concerned. Most of them did a really good job. The last promoter was Paul Fusco, who owned a small auction company uh, near here. He, uh, he did did small, uh, or I shouldn't say small, they were actually pretty large auctions, uh, and he did a heck of a job running the show. Unfortunately, he was a friend and he passed away a few years ago, and Leland's took over the show uh, from his family. Um, one of the reasons we took over the show is not the fact that it makes all this money. Uh, it, it does make some money, and we want to try to try to make it so it makes some more money, but is the history. We wanted to keep it going, and we were a little bit scared that if someone that didn't have a passion for this took it over that it wouldn't last so uh, we took it over and uh, there's multiple benefits for us first we get to see all our friends out here uh, get to see all our clients uh, we get to try our hand at show promoting uh, with the help of Steve Menzi Steve Menzi is also uh, helping us out promote the show and we learned a lot from him and uh, he's teaching us and helping us and uh, we probably couldn't have done it without him uh, and the third benefit for us is this has always been a great show for us. We've always gotten incredible consignments here. Been we've done incredible buying. Um, you know, we bought things like Mickey Mantle's bat out of this show years ago. Uh, there used to be a small auction uh, held down here in the uh, in the room that that houses the uh, the swimming pool. Uh, we want to try to bring that auction back. Uh, that auction has been responsible for putting onto the market several pieces of Joe Jackson memorabilia that came from the Cleveland Stadium Museum. Uh, I remember about 20, I mean, it was about 25, 30 years ago. During the auction, somebody brought in someone who had who had actually bought stuff from the museum or 
took stuff out of the garbage when the museum went out of business down at the stadium, or they no longer had a museum, brought in a pair of Joe Jackson's cleats. And at that time, I think they sold for $5,000. And today, they'd probably be worth half a million or more. So um, great things have come through this show over the years. And uh, you know, to this day, you know, the, the things that walked into the show over the weekend have been incredible. There's a, a set of e-cars. There's a set of uh, 1933 Gaudi cars. A lot of the stuff people are still finding in their closets, which is pretty amazing because uh, I thought those days were just about over. But out here, Midwest, Ohio, great place to still find things. And, uh, you know, the, the show is... Uh, this year we, we allowed, uh, in the past, nothing shiny has been allowed on the tables, but this year it's primarily vintage, 90%. I'm sure if you walk around you'll see 90% of what's here is vintage. There is some newer material this year. We allowed dealers to bring in some newer material. How could we not? It's a, uh, you know, in this day and age, uh, even, even Leland's, who has primarily focused on vintage stuff, we're dealing in some newer cards. It's a big part of our industry, and I've, I myself have finally come to accept it. So uh, this show, you'll find anything primarily vintage, but you will find some modern cards, some of which are worth six figures on the show floor. So anyone that's never been to this show, I would encourage them to come out and and uh, take a look. Maybe if it's too late this year, come out next year. We're going to have it again, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Another lot pickup here. Got all these for $250. You have a Drysdale rookie. Then you also have the 57 Barra. Nice 64 maze. This card's very, very sharp. Then you have the 59 Garen. And then a 1960 stand usual. Hi, I'm Brian Drett with Mile High Card Company. This is the T206 Honus Wagner, the famed Charlie Sheen All-Star Cafe Wagner. It was stolen out of the All-Star Cafe in Midtown Manhattan in the 90s. Recovered, he eventually sold the card. We're really privileged to be able to sell it in our March 31st auction. It ends this Thursday, March 31st. We expect the card to sell for three million plus. So this should be the last pickup here. We're gonna end up going to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame right after. But three cards, one of them is for my PC. I ended up upgrading the Lefty Grove that I picked up earlier. I had a friend that wanted that version and I saw a nicer one at the show, so I decided to pick up this one right here. Pretty cool card, in good shape. And then my friend, Woman 1951 is completing a full set and was looking for some upgrades and I saw these in a six and a seven. So that is gonna go towards his set build. Anyways, those were the pickups here today. Payne from uh, Des Moines, Iowa, Payne Sports Collectibles. Uh, this weekend here at the Strongsville show, it was uh, vintage, vintage, vintage. Uh, lots of sales on graded cards, your usual guys, your Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, Sandy Koufax, but pre-war stuff is very, very hot. Lots and lots of people looking for Mel Ott's and Ty Cobbs and Roger Hornsby and all the big name guys from that era. So it's uh, the market is very strong right now for that material and uh, I think a lot of people are really starting to learn who some of these uh, you know, pre-war players are, so. Hey guys, so yeah, so my name's Jim and I wanted to take a minute to show him uh, these uh, partial blacklist error Frank Thomas rookie cards. Um, they're a variation of the no name on the front rookie card. Uh, you can see where the black line starts to go away and some of the black goes away in the name as well. So they're all a little bit different, each one. Uh, there's only 10 total of these graded by PSA. So they're pretty cool.
All right, so about to head back to Orlando on my flight, but I want to give you guys some final thoughts on the show this weekend. Now, all the dealers that were here were pretty much national dealers. They had some really amazing inventory at the show, and this was kind of like in a hotel conference room for a smaller hotel. So imagine some of the best vintage dealers all in one room. It was really awesome. Uh, one thing that was cool to see was a lot of the different regional releases, kind of like the cons that were in Cincinnati. So you're able to see some of those that people brought down to the show. Now, because the inventory was so, so good, a lot of dealers really didn't negotiate on their price. They knew that they had the buyers and the clientele in the room and that if you didn't buy the card, someone else was going to. So only maybe like five or $10 discounts on a lot of the different slab cards that were priced. Now for me personally, I found the best deals in the rubber band stacks that these dealers have. If you aren't familiar with rubber band stacks, it's kind of like uh, bargain bins for vintage cards. A dealer will have a bunch of different cards and let's say 1965 tops or 66 wrapped up in a rubber band, both commons and stars. So you have to really dig through them to find it. One cool thing about this show that I found out from a lot of dealers is the inventory that was actually brought to it. So a major auction house actually got a consignment that day on a full 1933 Gaudi set. Another auction house got consigned a 1986 Fleer Michael Jordan card that was autographed. So those were just two pieces. There was also many dealers that bought collections that weekend. One included a, a Gaudi Ruth as a SGC Five. So really, really phenomenal stuff at the show. Next weekend, I'm gonna be going to a show in Montana. The following week, I'm gonna take it easy and go to a local one in Clearwater, Florida. Catch you guys there.